Views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. Tonight we focus on the storm just passed. We'll have Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., Council Members Jimmy Vaca and Annabelle Palmer, and the Chair of Community Board 8, all to give you finally a Bronx only report on Tropical Storm Irene. How did we do the good, the bad, and the ugly? If you have questions or comments about how your neighborhood fared in the storm, tonight is your chance to ask them to people who can make a difference. Call in at 718-960-7241. You can also email comments to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com, and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. We start with the first citizen of the Bronx, the Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz, Jr. Good evening, Mr. Borough President. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be on. Great. Uh, give us a, um, a, a bit of a, a summary, an evaluation of where we are at right now as far as uh, former hurricane, but now uh, tropical storm, Irene. Well, well we, we, um, we dodged the bullet here, Gary, and we are in pretty good shape. And if that's the case, uh, then you have to just back up a little bit and understand that uh, for the, uh, the last three or four days, we've coordinated with the city, with city agencies, with all of the elected officials, uh, with community leaders, volunteers, and it was that tremendous preparation that enabled us to be in the shape that we are in today. I've been able to tour certain areas of the Bronx over the last day and a half. I've uh, toured some of our A zones, and I'm proud to announce that uh, we pulled together, we did well, uh, there's been some down trees. We have a little over 100 down trees. As of yesterday, we had 6,700 residents without power. Uh, as of an hour ago, uh, we have less than 1,900 residents in the Bronx without power. And to Con Edison's credit, they've been working around the clock. And so I really want to tip my hat off to the mayor. You know that I've fought with the mayor on a number of occasions on a myriad of different issues. Uh, but on this one, Gary, we have to give the mayor and his team and the deputy mayors uh, an A grade for the preparation and the response after the tropical storm, uh, Irene or Hurricane. We shouldn't trivialize it because there are other areas that have been tremendously hit throughout the city of New York and the state of New York. Uh, but we, uh, we did well here in the Bronx. Tell me about what kinds of preparations you think were effective in helping us get through it uh, with uh, minimal damage to uh, uh, property and, of course, also uh, to people as well as uh, other infrastructures? Or did we simply get lucky because, frankly, the, the brunt of the storm was felt in other locales? Well, we've, we're lucky because no matter what type of preparation, when Mother Nature hits hard, it's very difficult for us to sustain that, that, that hard hit. And, uh, and so we're lucky that uh, we didn't get the brunt of the uh, the hurricane, but nonetheless, some of the preparation that we were able to do was uh, through conference calls, emails, we used Facebook to get the information out there to people to tell them to stay home, to evacuate uh, certain areas. Uh, we were able to mobilize senior citizens. We have volunteers uh, driving seniors from their homes to some of the evacuation zones. Uh, we, we were able to uh, uh, give people information in terms of what they should be buying, purchasing and, and, and what type of materials and, and equipment they should have readily accessible in their home. Uh, Facebook, for me, uh, worked wonders. Uh, I, you know, I think this is like the first time we saw a positive use uh, for the Facebook, uh, uh, using Facebook, uh, where thousands of Bronxites were able to not only uh, get information from my office, and I want to thank my staff for that, but at the same time, we were able to get information from them 
uh, in real time. And so uh, obviously there's so many different things that we need to uh, continue to work on uh, for future purposes, but uh, I think that we were able to um, to prepare well, and now it's time to make an, a correct assessment and, uh, and, and and make sure that the city uh, continues to uh, work with us with regards to cleanup. I just got off the phone with U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. I know the federal government is doing everything that they uh, can do to help New York State and New York City, uh, and I'm glad that the Bronx is not uh, forgotten by the federal, city, and state levels. As far as the evacuation sites, uh, there were a number of them listed, uh, and, and through Facebook or other ways, uh, they were communicated to Bronx sites. Who used those evacuation sites? Were they uh, uh, effectively used? And uh, are you satisfied that what went on there was actually helpful to people who might have been in need? First of all, let me thank the, uh, the volunteers who gave of themselves and stayed away from their own families to man uh, or to, uh, uh, to be able to supervise these sites. We have 14 in the borough. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is that while we had certain A zones, uh, which encompasses tens of thousands of people that should have evacuated, Gary, uh, less than 500 people actually went to uh, these evacuation sites. Uh, that's not to say that people did not evacuate. Um, uh, I think a lot of people went to friends' homes that were outside of the A zone. Uh, but I think in the future, I think people need to uh, also understand that when the mayor of the city of New York calls for a mandatory evacuation, uh, that's something that should not be taken lightly. And um, I, what concerned me is that a lot of people, and I know that Bronx sites are tough, but a lot of people opted to stay home. Uh, and it's a good thing that we did not, again, uh, get the, uh, the worst part of the hurricane. Uh, but in the future, I think that people need to adhere to those evacuation warnings. Uh, no. We also need to work with the city uh, so they can be mindful that there are other areas uh, that, that should be considered A zones. For instance, uh, all of City Island is not considered an A zone. I believe that perhaps that's something we should look into. Uh, areas uh, are not all of Edgewater or Locust Point, um, Harding Park, uh, you know, these are all areas that, that, that partially are considered A zones. But these are conversations that we should have with the city so that in the future uh, they can uh, be classified as that. I, I also want to thank the local elected officials. Uh, I know that Jimmy Vaca and I were uh, on in constant communication all weekend, uh, being that he represents an A-zone. Uh, and and, and uh, we, through email, text messaging, uh, every single elected official in the Bronx really stepped up to the plate. They engaged in the conference calls by the city. And, and to the city's credit, uh, they were not just giving us much, uh, information, but they were also listening to us and listening to the elected officials. Uh, obviously, elected officials know their district better than anyone else. So um, I want to tip my hat, and I'm proud uh, of all of the Bronx elected officials for the work that we did here. You know, given some of the tenor in the past, that's, I think, for Bronxites, and encouraging to hear. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, this undercurrent that's out there uh, and I know you've heard it, I've certainly heard it, we've seen it on blogs. People are saying, you know what, why did we have to really evacuate? It wasn't that serious. Why did they have to shut down, uh, you know, the, the transit system in its entirety? Maybe it was a little bit of overreaction, kind of overcompensating for, uh, you know, the, the missteps that were taken during the snowstorm. Uh, do you have the sense that maybe, well, the city was like overcautious this time, especially as you reported, we really didn't get the brunt of the storm? No, I, I do not feel that way. Gary, and now that the football preseason is upon us, I think it's fitting to use the cliche that this is Monday morning quarterbacking. In other words, it's easy to say that now that uh, the, we, we realize that the storm did not hit us as, as hard as we thought it was going to be, but you could never, ever be overly prepared. And so for those individuals, I would say you can't have it both ways. You can't have it where the mayor was out of town, where there was no one at the helm, uh, in the blizzard back in, in, uh, in, in the winter and complain about that because there was a lack of preparation and then now say there was over-preparation. I think that in this case, the mayor uh, gets an A-plus for uh, his preparedness, for keeping all of us abreast. Uh, and, and you know what? It's better to be overly prepared and be safe than sorry. Uh, you know, could you imagine if the preparations that were taking place were not in, in 
it were not there, were not implemented, and something worse would have happened, those are the same people who would have been complaining about the mayor not being prepared. So, Mr. Borough uh, President, we have to kind of be overprepared. we have to kind of move on. I have some of your colleagues in government waiting to uh, join us. I thank you for your time and and for your uh, uh, diligence in uh, doing what you can to keep us all safe over the last couple of days. Thank you, Gary. Okay, all the best. We're just going to move right along. I think I can just go say uh, good evening to uh, Jimmy Vacca, uh, council member of. Uh, uh, District uh, 13 in the Bronx. Uh, Council Member Vaca, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you, Gary. Thank you for having me. Uh, the borough President said you and he were in close touch. Uh, I didn't really ask him what I'm about to ask you, and that is, uh, so give me some of the difficult things. I know people in your part of the Bronx live on the coastlines. Uh, City Island uh, was hit uh, reasonably hard or comparatively hard. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you're concerned about at this point. Well, we still have many people blacked out, uh, and I want to get those people restored. Um, I have some blackout situations in country clubs, some in Pelham Gardens that need to be addressed. Um, I think all in all, I would agree with Borough President Diaz that the mayor did an A-plus job. Um, but I do think we had issues, but I do think that they were addressed soon. Uh, we had a, a very big, big block of about 2,200 people that the uh, morning the storm landed Sunday morning, 3.30. Their houses went out in Country Club, and those people reached out to me. And come 7.30, 8 o'clock, we were able to restore, 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 and get that area online. Many, many of those people were online. And that was really through the fact that the elected officials were given direct links to the Office of Emergency Management, direct phone numbers to call. So when constituents emailed me or called me or Facebooked me and got me, I was able to call someone directly and say, hey. And, and this is what uh, the borough president was talking about. Um, some of the neighborhoods, my own neighborhood, and uh, maybe some of the areas that you uh, uh, cover, uh, had problem, big problems with trees coming down, uh, oh. and, and they crushed cars and, and things like that. Um, how widespread was that in your area, and uh, is that a problem? Gary, I cannot begin to tell you the tree damage I saw but also the fact that many of these gigantic trees landed across the entire street, which was true on Kingsland Avenue, where a tree fell, came down, blocking the entire street, and took all, all these electric wires with it and a street light with it. It was gigantic, and it was unbelievable to see. Uh, I had a, a similar situation on Stadium Avenue and Country Club, where a very big tree fell into a lady's front yard, and prevented her from leaving the house, so she couldn't leave her house. Um, I do talk about something in Pelham Parkway on Bronx Park East, where we had what I call an abyss, a gigantic hole almost two blocks long on Bronx Park East near Waring, uh, near Waring Astor Thrace Place, opened up, uh, trees collapsed, and the entire ground and sidewalk shifted in place. I guess, you know, th um, that is... Unbelievable damage. I guess that's somewhat expected. The real question is, are those issues being addressed? Are they being addressed uh, reasonably quickly? Uh, and so that, uh, you know, these things do happen. But is there responsiveness? Because, you know, as you well know, in the past, a lot of times the people of the Bronx uh, have been kind of left behind when they say, hey, we have a problem, and uh, nobody comes to call. Well, I, I, I want the people of the Bronx to know that, believe me, People like myself have been involved in this process of making sure flood-prone neighborhoods are, are having their needs addressed since the early 70s and then later on. So many of us know what these communities need in so much as um, shelters and help when it comes to flooding. I do think this time was much different than the snow emergency, and many people know I was very critical of how the city handled the snow removal debacle, the blizzard of December 26th. This was very, very different. We absolutely had all hands on deck. The elected officials, like myself, were kept in the loop from the very, very beginning. We were able to give the city, to the commissioners, the agencies directly what we knew would happen and where, and what we needed from them when it happened. And I guess uh, we were helped out, as uh, we talked about with the borough president, we were helped out by the fact that the, the worst of the storm didn't exactly come to the borough of the Bronx and even parts of New York City. We should mention, um, and I know that you feel strongly about, there was loss of life in City Island, and, and a, a gentleman uh, 
died as a result of the storm, and, and we all, of course, offer our condolences. Uh, Mr. Councilman, one last question for you. Um, as the chair of the Transportation Committee, I'm sure you had input into the uh, decision to shut down the MTA relatively early. It wasn't like even on an emergency. Uh, do you support that uh, notion, and do you think that was effective in the long run? Well, I find myself praising the MTA. And believe me, that's not easy for me because I don't often praise the MTA. I, don't want to ha I did not want to have what happened in the blizzard where the MTA allowed the trains to run, they allowed buses to run, and then they could not get people off the buses, they could not get people off the trains, and buses were trapped in snow. So I think, in, especially in light of the fact that it was a weekend, I think the MTA acted correctly. I do not want to risk one person's life. And I do think that this storm, if it hit full force, which it was expected to hit, could have paralyzed the city. And, and therefore, I agree with Borough President Diaz and the mayor and the MTA that we had to err on the side of safety, always expecting the worst but hoping for the best. And we in the city absolutely dodged a bullet, as you said. Uh, because if the full level one hurricane had hit, I know especially our waterfront communities would have been damaged much more uh, than what we have. La you know, last question for you, sir. We're going to bring on your colleague, uh, Councilmember Palmer, in just a moment. Did you learn anything? Is there something that you saw happen despite your enthusiasm for how the city behaved? Is there something that you saw happen that you say, you know what, next time we ought to handle this this way? I, I've learned one thing. I've been running around the community today, and I'll tell you one thing. I think the Parks Department has got to reassess its policy or its fiscal constraints where they are not pruning trees, where the tree pruning program is almost non-existent, where to, when you I, have tree roots in the sidewalk and the sidewalk is lifting, why aren't those roots pruned and the sidewalk restored? Councilmember, I'm going to jump in and, and just say I did see a, a number of trees that had broken. Could be devastating to a homeowner. The, the, the weight of the tree and the inability or the unwillingness to keep these trees on a pruning schedule. Right. Uh, I, I have to jump in and, and agree with you. Some of the trees that went down, I saw. Uh, you know, corroded roots and corroded trunks, those are the trees that are going to fall if they're maintained ahead of the time. I think we can get a, a better uh, a vision of what that's about. Uh, Council Member, I'm going to let you go and bring on your colleague, uh, Annabelle Palmer, who uh, rep represents uh, the 18th uh, Council District. Council Member Palmer, thank you for joining us this evening. Gary? Yes, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. How did your uh, community in the uh, southeastern part of the Bronx fare during this storm? No, I, I think as, um, uh, it, you know, in all fairness, it, it wasn't as bad as, as we had expected. We have, you know, um, the same issues of fallen trees, um, some damage to some cars. Um, but I think each community, um, each neighborhood within the community, you know, was reached out to the, the Park Chester area, did a, an exceptional job at making sure that they were well-staffed um, to be able to handle whatever, um, you, you know, the storm brought to us. I personally went out with um, Deputy Inspector Ortiz from the 43rd Precinct, and we visited um, Clasen Point and Harding Park, which, you know, um, to my to my amazement was um, classified as a zone um, C, which I you know they they're right in the waterfront and and believe that they should have been a zone eight and I reached out to the administration and and you know then they they agreed and and had um, reassessed their um, you know um, classification well, that, of, of that area that, and we were asking of... folks you know just to evacuate and, and, and get the higher ground. Um, most of the people did so, and, you know, um, I, I believe that now we're, we're dealing, you know, with your fallen trees and, and right. trying to clear up some of the what the stone has left us. I guess, I guess that kind of responsiveness is somewhat of a relief to you because uh, over the years we've talked in, with you and your colleagues that sometimes the Bronx gets overlooked. Uh, in that way. Uh, big problems or anything that really happened? I mean, listen, the loss of property if a tree fell on a car, I mean, I'm not minimizing that, but was there anything significant in your part of the borough that, uh, you, you know, is going to need long-term attention? Um, no, I, I think, I mean, I have to agree with Councilmember Barker in, in terms of, 
you know, maybe um, having parks be a little bit more proactive. And, and I know that there are budget, budget constraints, but, you know, we do have a lot of um, forestry, a lot of trees. We have family parks. We can, you know, make sure that, that those trees are kept before, um, you know, um, during kept on a normal basis and not have to wait to the last minute and for things like this to happen then to have to come to clean up. I also, you know, want to mention um, DEP was very responsive, especially around the, the Classen Point and, and Hunting Park area and um, going to, to get into um, the stores and, you know, if we can also be proactive on the DEP and to do more of that kind of work and not have to wait so, you know, we have um, major rains and, and storms um, than to deal with, with those issues. I think it'll be a, a, a huge help to the district. Yeah, I guess preparedness is nice, uh, you know, in the short term over the weekend when you know the storm is coming, but what you're saying is long-term maintenance right. might actually for, forestall right. some I, of these, these I issues. I definitely think that there could be some policy changes in terms of long-term planning to, right. to be able to maintain sewers and catch basins um, on a regular basis. Councilmember Palmer, thank you so much uh, for joining us, and we're going to uh, uh, go to the uh, northernmost part of the borough, the uh, northwest Bronx, and uh, bring on uh, Bob Fanuzzi, who is the chair of Community Board 8, who was very active and I guess um, saw his uh, community for the wrong reasons on the front page of the New York Times this morning. Uh, Bob, how are you, first of all? I'm fine, Gary, and this is not the way I wanted to make the front page, I have to tell you. <laughs> Well, listen, reality is what it is. This was a relatively difficult time for the people in the, in, in the Northwest Bronx. It really was. I, by my count, we had uh, the entire Bronx experienced 300 um, household outages from electricity, and I think we got about 1,000 of them just in Community Board 8. Um, so that's been our biggest problem so far. In addition to all the tree fallings and the property damage, and some spot flooding, it's really been the power outages that's been our big problem. Do you think that's an infrastructure problem or just uh, you know, the way it happened that the storm hit uh, your part of the Bronx in, in a different way than it may have hit other parts of the Bronx? Uh, two things I guess I'd say about that. One is that some of the um, power lines have been um, kind of fragile and have been prone to outages before. Um, and this has been an occasion for residents to say, hey, you know, every time the wind blows or the breeze blows the wrong way, we get a power outage. Um, so it was no surprise that the area that experienced the most widespread outage did, and that was South Riverdale. I have to say that South Riverdale got the hurricane and North Riverdale got the tornado of last summer. So uh, we're even... I, I, guess, I guess there's some uh, equanimity in that. Uh, then I guess you would agree in concept with what Councilmember Palmer said, that really preparedness in the short term is an interesting thing, but preparedness in the long term is as valuable. In other words, when you get overall complaints over a period of time for electricity, if you deal with it then, maybe in times of emergency you wouldn't have these kinds of problems. Exactly. There's the catch basin issue, there's the tree issue, and this is a call for parks to get increased funding for arborists and pruning. Uh, we all know how parks has experienced a ton of cuts. Uh, and then furthermore, there's the issue of Con Ed's maintenance, especially in that South Riverdale area. Um, Gary, I'm very happy to say that on the stroke at 9 o'clock, just in time for your program, Chervier Nursing Homes electricity was restored, um, well, literally on the stroke at 9. That, and uh, if anybody knows Chervier, it's a very large facility that's uh, uh, a health care and nursing home rehabilitation center. They were running on their own generators um, uh, using only essential services, so right for in time for your show. You know, I saw an interview, and I don't know if this is an isolated thing, and maybe it just happened to one family and then the news happened to catch them. I saw an interview about some folks who live out by Spite and Dival and uh, said that they were uh, awakened in the middle of the night and told to evacuate and felt that that was a little uh, uh, irresponsible by the city and maybe they should have been told ahead of time and you know it was I guess certainly frightening to be you know have a knock on the door and say you've got to get out um, do you have a, do you, are you aware of that that happened and uh, do you know uh, whether you know those uh, uh, complaints are founded or, or what that situation was I'm getting a couple of reports like that we did not um, expect that because we weren't in zone A, B, or C. And like everybody else, I was keeping a close watch on that map. 
uh, and we didn't fall into that. So um, the evacuation order probably went according to a new assessment of danger that wasn't flooding, uh, and we will look into that, exactly what was the assessment of danger that caused that evacuation order. Uh, th this my is final not question for you, sir, is um, are you satisfied with the responsiveness? Now, where there were trees down, as I said, it was on the front page of the Times today. In my, in my neighborhood in Van Cortland Village, we had a number of trees down. Are you satisfied? In fact, that's one of them uh, right there. Are you satisfied that uh, the, the cleanup is going in an expeditious form, or are you still having to call back and say, hey, you got to get to this, that, or the other? I actually uh, ran into some parks employees at about 1.30, 2 o'clock on Sunday, and that's a giant change from a year ago um, oh. and every storm before that. Uh, oh. The responsiveness to the Bronx was about light years ahead of what it's been. Wow, that, um, uh, I, I think uh, that, that certainly seems to be the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the final vote from everybody who's been on the show, that this was an improved response. And I guess uh, maybe um, all of us, the city of New York and elected officials and uh, community board leaders like yourself, uh, you know, would be happy about that. That sounds like progress. Very happy, and it's really because of elected officials, community leaders, media, and community boards keeping the pressure on pay attention to the Bronx. Bob Fanuzzi from Community Board 8, thanks for spending a few moments with us. It's my pleasure, Gary. Thank you. Folks, uh, we've reached the end of the show. I do want to thank all our guests tonight, uh, the Borough President Ruben Diaz, uh, Council Members uh, Jimmy Vaca and Annabelle Palmer, and of course you just heard uh, Robert Fanuzzi from Community Board 8. If you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com, and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Archives of our program are always available to you 24-7 at bronxnet.org. You click Bronx Talk on the right-hand navigation bar. Now, next week, we'll give you a wholly different show, a chance to focus on a Bronx photographer who has for years documented life in the borough. He's worked with the Norwood News and the Bronx News Network, He's a photographer. His name is Adi Talwar. He'll be our guest, and he has some gorgeous pictures to show. Then the week after, on the 12th of September, a Bronx organization that's on the cutting edge of a number of technical, educational, and environmental initiatives. Perscolis will be with us on September 12th. We'll see you then and every Monday night at 9 for Bronx Talk. Special thanks to producer Jane Floro, who went the extra mile to help us out and get all the guests tonight. Director Michael Arias, Dina, and our cast of thousands who are up in the booth, around us in the studio, and to you, good night. things we count on every day started as ideas. Ideas from the minds of African Americans. Support minority education today so we don't miss out on the next big idea tomorrow. The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org.